We are now live. Welcome to Hukalo TV. This is Mark Zinzo hosting today. And welcome. Uh, this is a test webinar. We're playing with the uh, premium Google Hangouts that allows us to have 25 people in a webinar. So unlike uh, the Saturday webinars when we have a lot of volunteers in the background combing the chats for questions, I'm hoping that everybody who wants to ask a question today will be able to participate in the uh, main hangout. Uh, so Jim, would you like to start us off with a blessing? Yes, first of all, hello Stan. Stan just entered the room as well. And um, I, hello, and Stan was one uh, had the idea of having the hybrid, having a uh, webinar each week for hybridization or for to talk about hybridization in the children and everything. And he would be willing to help as well with uh, doing that if if that does come about. So thank you, Stan. Cool. That's great. And we I can always use help. Uh, I will say a prayer right now. I'll start with a little prayer, and then we can, I don't know what subject you want to start with, but we can start anywhere. Okay. Dear Mother, Father, God, we just thank you for this time of community, of friendship, of love and gathering, and we ask that you be with us and uh, make it a wonderful time of information, joy, and love, and, and connection. We just want to do the best that we can to connect the world and the universe together and make it a better place to live and a more wonderful place to travel and commute. Uh, thank you so much for the things and talents that you give us, the skills, the things that we can learn, the things that you have for us in our uniqueness. We just pray that you would be with us on our path and be with all of us day to day. Much love and thank you. Amen. Amen. So, right. Jim, I, uh, I think uh, taking a good time for channeling messages for those who have hybrid children concerns is a great topic. Uh, I'm also thinking that uh, in, the, in the weekly webinars, we usually jump right into channeling uh, after blessing and introductions and I was thinking um, maybe we could take a little time to stop and just uh, give a uh, in a nutshell what is the big picture with alien races the uh, uh, survival concerns for humanity and uh, uh, our, uh, what's what's on the horizon for us in terms of our common spiritual growth as a culture and a species? Well, those are a lot of questions because there's more than one there. The first one is about our connection to the galaxy. And um, there are many people or many species out there that are helping us to grow that are uh, knowing that we are expanding and ascending and raising our vibrations day by day. And some are just observing and some are helping with keeping the timeline alive. The timeline, according to 95% of all those who I speak to, is going to continue and will not fail. So. That is good news. So the future of humanity is safe in the sense that we will continue. How many of us will continue? That's a question that's up in the air. But at this point, they're working day and night to make sure that after the financial collapse that, uh, or during the financial collapse, that as few as possible are harmed, as few as possible are displaced. And at this point, Every day they are together doing this, uh, trying to figure this out and uh, making moves on the earth in the sense of helping people make decisions for the right move for humanity. And they do have those people they can speak to on earth that can help make these decisions. So this is what they're working on right now because other than 
that they cannot come right down and change everything or tell everybody what to do or or become part of our system because that's just not the right thing to do. This is our society. This is our the way we develop things. This is the way our society has decided to live its life. So they're not going to come down and change it. But they know that we are going to eventually have a financial collapse, which we ultimately caused ourselves. Now, in doing so, they know that there will be those that will try to rise up to bring the monetary system back, and that is not the most wonderful thing for us because there are other systems to bring back that would be much better for humanity. Systems that many different species actually use. Uh, they, uh, some systems are, one of the systems is that they, as a child is growing up, they give him many different uh, tests to find out what his most uh, uh, his interests are, what he would learn the best, how, where where he's what he's geared for or she, um, and then start them off on a way that would be more successful and more unique to that individual than just throwing him into a school system. Now, and the benefits of that are the fact that whenever someone is born on some societies, they're given certain things to survive. This is the right as their as a life force, a being, they get this, 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 and this. And then they start growing, they start learning, they choose their own academic trail after the first after the beginning, if they're not uh, liking the, the way things are going, they can change it. But the thing is, as they move forward and become more successful in their academia, then at this age they get another set of things that they can choose from to increase their life. This is their reward for the hard work that they did. And, you know, all through here, every year, of their academia if they go through in, it successfully they get some kind of reward so and then there comes a point where you can become an artist you can start a different trade there are certain ages that they're allowed to start moving out on their own to to get a trade to exchange different things not necessarily money because you see when money is the only thing that it's exchanged then that becomes the center of focus. Like in our society, you can't live without money. And so it becomes the center focus and which, is, uh, which makes the population off-balanced immediately. Because if there's one focus, not everybody will be focused on that. They're, they want everyone in their societies to be focused on the things that they need, they want, they desire, and they're rewarded for carrying out those things for that drive. Some people, of course, will be more successful than others, but they are still rewarded for any kind of success in their life, which is how it should be, really. And crime-wise, there's very little crime because you don't desire the things of others unless they're in your field of course but you know that they will be available to you if you do the work so um, there and, and as they grow and become older because they lived some of them to old age they change their learning skills they become more creative they jot out they uh, move out into maybe another field of interest as they get older and they are still able to maintain their their previous interests if that's what they so desire and it's a very um, creative society in the sense that things are invented much faster because they have the ability to work together if they want they're not, they're not, uh, they don't have to be by themselves. They can work with others in a team or a group or one other, or they can work alone if they wish. But 
it's a much happier and more if they decide not to work together then after a while then that is fine too for one reason or another but the results of that are a much more creative and happier society of course there still is crime but it's much smaller it's you do not have to be as worried and there is security and that's one of the things that somebody might aspire to is becoming uh, helpful in security so and it just seems I don't know all the ins and outs of of these different societies but I just know it sounds much more beautiful and loving than it is here at times any questions about that or did I not answer all the questions Hello? Hi, Brian. I see hey, Brian. Hey, Jim. Yep. How you doing? Who else came? Yes, okay. Hey, Will. Hey, Mark. Hey, Brian. Welcome. I remember you were talking about this a uh, week or two ago, so I was like, cool, I made it. <laughs> oh, very cool. Thanks cool. for coming. You're welcome. Did I not answer all your questions, Mark? Well, uh, the, the one aspect, you gave me a nice taste of what it's like in other places. But um, what are some of the possibilities? You know, I, I, I guess uh, I, I like uh, hearing that other species have an alternative to the uh, core curriculum that is so controversial in our education. But what do you see the options for people on this planet who want to get ready for a broader perspective of spiritual growth and uh, different species to relate to? What uh, you know? I from talking to you, I've started meditating uh, um, much more than I ever did before. What other kinds of things? Well, the one big, the one biggest thing that everybody should be doing is trying to be who they truly are. There, because you see, one problem in our society is we go out into society and we try to fit into society. We do not. We are not really ourselves fully in society because that's a no-no in some ways because some of the things we do are unacceptable or our beliefs or whatever it is that society says the norm is because they have a certain area where that is fringy and then they have a certain area that's accepted and then they have an area where it's no, they can't do it. However, if each individual was actually who God sent them out to be and was not afraid to show who they are in society and not afraid to for other people to see that even whatever that may bring it it will change the way that society is because you you're not fitting into it you're expressing yourself in it I think that's a very important thing because many people are afraid to be themselves in society. Many people are afraid to express exactly what to believe, and, and rightfully so, because they will be tormented or whatever. But I think that it's a necessity that we be who we are, and that prepares us for the future. Because if you're not who you are and you're pretending to be somebody else and trying to fit in, you're not going to be prepared for what's coming. What is coming is a freedom that is not known yet. Telepathy is, is a, something that's not known yet. We have an inkling of what it's like. We have a thought process of what it might be like. But we really don't know what it's like to be telepathic with one another, to be able to walk up to someone and know how they feel or be able to help them with their day because they are not feeling so good. It's not verbal necessarily, but it is emotional. How to emotionally care for one another in a way that is nonverbal. Now, can you possibly imagine that? Well, you know, I have a hard time imagining that, and I don't yes. want to take too much time on this thread because I see we're starting to get questions in the chat. That's uh, right. I have a hard time uh, finding the time to take care of myself and support others with just the verbal requests. If I was telepathic, yourself, then. 
You see, but if you are truly yourself, then you are supporting others with who you are. You don't yes. find time for it. It just is. You don't find time to support others. You just do. Hmm. I'll have Does to, that make sense to you? I'll have to cogitate on that. Uh, because... In my life, I've found that since I've been more myself, I do not have to go out and pretend to be somebody else, but I can help in a way to minister to people who are not being themselves by just being myself, and they'll be asking questions after that. They're sort of drawn to the thought that, well, he can say that. How could he say that? How can he do that? Isn't he afraid to do that or say that or... Is he afraid to express himself online and have other people's... Oh, there's all kinds of nasty comments to come back. But you know what? I don't read them. You know why? Because they are not who I am, and they obviously don't understand who I am, and they're not ready for that yet. But if you are who you really are, your friends will be true. The attraction of the the people that you attract will be true. It won't just be for they just want to pick pick your brain or they'll just want to feel your energy or drain you of energy or whatever. But they'll want to be around you to be themselves too. They'll want to be themselves with you. Hopefully. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Uh I'm still not quite sure what that looks like in terms of my own life, but uh, that's part of the journey. Of so, uh, Jeremy, if you're ready to ask your question, you could unmute. Hi, Jeremy, wherever you are. Is he unmuted or? Jeremy, can you speak? He. It looks like he's unmuted, but maybe, Jeremy, if you click mouse up to the top of the screen and click on the little gear, uh, you could switch to a different microphone input. The default one may not be plugged in. Okay. We'll go to someone and wait. Uh, come back to Jeremy then. Well, um, I can read his question off the chat window. Uh, he, Jeremy says he had a dream last night uh, of a gray, and yes. the gray showed him their true form and it was a light being yes and uh, let's see he just would like to see if you can uh, confirm that the uh, light being was who he says he is and who did he say he was uh, his guide Ah, thank His you, guide. Valerie. His guide? One moment, please. And I'm sensing that, yes, that's who it was, because he wanted to reveal that his, uh, his guide is a light worker, and his guide is leading him into a light worker situation. And, um, yes, you can trust that, because um, if they are trying to lead you into a light worker situation, if you feel that you are moving in that direction, um, but make sure it resonates with you. I mean, it, it, it resonates with me right now that he is, was telling the truth. But it's more important that he resonated with you. But I believe he was a light worker, Gray. Yes, and he also said that his name was Zeth. With a Z, Z E T H. Okay. Zeth. That's actually to let you know that is a a common gray name. So I yes, I believe it was true. But make sure it resonates with you. It does resonate with me from a distance here that you're feeling good about it and that you feel that he was telling the truth. That's what I'm feeling from you and from this experience. So if that is the case, then yes. 
he is a he is a light worker for you. Okay, I think we've covered that question. Um, Valerie, is there are you tracking anybody else in the queue? You know, no, but I do have some questions myself if I can. Great, sure. thank you. Okay, um, you know, I do read a lot of things <laughs> outside of this, and I watch a lot of different programs, and um, there has been some things mentioned about Mars recently, and I don't know if Jim can connect with that or not, but um, I recently uh, heard of a, of a child who had, uh, who has been reincarnated, and this child can totally explain what Mars was like thousands of years ago. And he yes. isn't very old, but he's learning extremely fast in this life. So he's yes. able to tell the story at a very young age of two. So yes. it's completely cool. believable. That's very and cool, yes. Uh, what Mar he has to there say is, is that... On. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, what he has to say is that um, Mars has people still there. Yes. But they're inside. And exactly. I just wondered if you could confirm that for me. Absolutely. Um, yes, I was go actually, I w when I was interrupting you, I was going to say all the life on Mars right now is subterranean. Uh, they moved there because after the surface became uninhabitable, which will happen to every planet eventually, it is just, this the history of how planets go is they eventually be wear out and become uninhabitable on the surface. Many of the population will move inwards to the inside of the planet and be safe and still call it home. Some will leave. There are also humans that live on Mars right now as well. And they are on the surface, and there are also reptilians living on the surface of the moon as well. I mean Mars as well. And... Um, they're, they do not like each other, but uh, there used to be thousands of humans on Mars in a in a, pr a project. Well, I don't know about thousands, but at least hundreds. There used to be hundreds of people on Mars, and now there's only very few. So the reptilians have sort of chased them away and sent them back, told them to leave. And they have done so, except for a handful of humans, which they don't mind if that they're there right now, because they're not they're not threatened by just a handful. So, but they were threatened by hundreds. So um, they thought it would become a larger population, and they did not want that to happen. So, and yes, there are inhabitants inside the planet of Mars, and they are the Martians. Hello? Anyone out there? Yes, yes, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I was so engrossed in what you were saying, <laughs> my mind was just going there. <laughs> well, yes, they are. You're, he's absolutely right. The okay. ha inhabitants of Mars, it has been said before, are on the inside now. And they right. don't care if there's anybody on the outside because that's not where they inhabit right now. They would mind if people would start coming or species would start coming into their planet but mm -hmm. at this point they are they're fine with all the things that are going on but they are also humanoid correct? they are also humanoid yes yes and he was talking about their ships back then and how the bigger ships that were drop shaped carried many more ships and that the actual yep. ships that came to earth looked like planes which are planes now, which I found extremely interesting um, in comparison to what I've seen, you know, uh, in Egypt on the uh, on the walls you, there. Yes, you you so will find totally similarities in their uh, creative abilities to ours. And planes are yes, they they do have things that look very very similar to planes. There are some differences, of course, um, in styli stylization and things, but they are built to do the same exact thing. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to, to hear confirmation from a little boy and I think that we are going to see a lot more of that as yeah. more and more children are born, am I correct? Yes, you're going to find that 
since 1983, I think it was, the IQ of children being born is five points higher than before that year on average. That explains my son's brain. <laughs> Pardon me? I said that explains my son's great brain. <laughs> He so, was born yes, in 89, and he has done nothing but excel in his life, and his uh, yep. he has a wonderful brain that has, uh, what do you want to call it, um, you know, the ability to once he reads something, he can always remember it. Eidetic so, memory or photographic memory? Like a photographic memory. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yes, since 1983, the IQ of children is actually raised from birth. Now that's very, very interesting for, to, for a five point uh, degree in IQ to have uh, jumped up just for no apparent reason. So I believe that there is there was some alien influence on that. So I'm not sure exactly oh, I was how they did that, that but thing. I do think that I do think that that had something to do with some alien influence. I really do. And also, one wrong. more thing is that there is some new information having to do with um, RH negative factor, yes, and um, where that actually comes from. And so I found it extremely interesting that I do have the RH negative factor, and that mm. then my son has this extreme. Uh, yes, and there was population. rumors about people with RH. Um, dying off that 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 blood type will die off but that's I think that's just a, a something scare factor that someone sent out there so yeah I probably didn't listen to that <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't believe that because there's many people with RH negative blood types yeah and I am extremely healthy with that blood type so yeah yeah I don't think that at all but thank Excellent. you, Jim. I appreciate all your answers. I'm sure there are more questions, so I will pass well, the mic. Very good. I want you to be aware that not all this is just from my brain because I've been channeling for a while now and a lot of information from a lot of different beings, it gets stuck in here. And so it's, it's just, I've, I've channeled it before, it's, it's there, and I can recall it now. So. It's not that I'm super smart and have studied a lot, but when you channel a lot of different beings, you sort of get stuck with a lot of their information. And, and a lot of it, re the stuff that resonates with you sort of sticks. So, any other yes. questions? Anyone else? I do, if nobody has one. Hi, Jim, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi everyone. How are you I, doing? I'm re really, really good. I'm still, I'm still in this really high vibrational state of being from the last weekend. Um, many of you are familiar with my friend Bree um, that I, she joined Human Colony. Um, she found me through my light language videos. And Is that she, Brianna? <clears throat> yes, Brianna. And yes. we just attended the very first um, global international scientific pyramid conference and it, ha it was located here in the Chicago Illinois area Wonderful. and this was it was interesting that when I first came into the, the hangout right now you guys were talking about Egypt and Egyptian writing and I've been getting a lot of downloaded messages about the reintroduction of the information of the pyramids and the fact that they're all over the not only all of all over our world and there's so many that we're not even aware of that are just being being made aware of. And this particular conference, yes. I believe, I believe is going to be the first of many, because this was the first time ever that every expert and every archaeologist and every scientist has come together under one roof at one time to discuss how we really don't know about anything about the true use and construction and power behind pyramids. And yes, they're very I, versatile as well. And I'm feeling like this whole reintroduction into our remembering of this of the Egyptian writings and the power beneath the pyramids and sound healing and all the healing properties that have to do with pyramids and their ability to heal uh, water and 
the ability for us to ingest that water and ingest the healing properties from that water um, in the pyramids. And I also remember Bashar mentioning about the that there are also those corresponding pyramids all over, well, on the moon, Mars, and I'm sure many, many other planets. So I guess I just was wanting to, one, let everybody know <laughs> out in the world again that this is being, this power is being reintroduced and the, the need to reintroduce it and, and to understand that these were not places for burying pharaohs. That is not what these were for at all. And for us to remember what this is all about and how these pyramids on our planet connect to not only us as antennae and as spiritual healers, but also to other planets, other civilizations, and other, uh, other spiritual beings, beings and entities, um, and those of the, like the, uh, the, the Shikani, the Yael, and, and so forth. Yes. Oh, absolutely. No question. There are pyramids even in the United States. Did you know that? Yes, as a matter of fact, this is one of the things that was very interesting that most people think they only are in Egypt. And the thing is, is they're in every continent all over the place. And I found out in this conference that not only are they located in the United States, but um, there's about 200 here in Illinois alone that we aren't even being aware of. And, there's, and they're all over the countries and they're being hidden by purposefully, point, a purposefully planted rainforest and forestation so that we are unable to see them from the sky. Yes. They're all over the place. They're in the New England area. They're in the Midwest. They're in the South. They're also in the West So and in the far North. So they are everywhere in the, in uh, on every continent of the United States. Do you States. happen to know if there's any in Montana? Pardon me? Do you happen to know or get a feeling if there's any in Montana? Absolutely. I think there's, yes. there's at least one or two there. Yes. Thank you. I really wanted to know that there's several people, and Valerie, I've thought about you, um, because there's several people recently in the last few weeks who have been guided to move to Montana, and one of them is the creator and visionary of this Global Pyramid Conference, who was one woman, Marta Thomas, with the assistance of Brianna Hauk, that actually put this entire thing together with the assistance of many, many wonderful people and experts and volunteers. So... Wendy, can I ask, is, is it Mission, Mount, Mission Mountain area that she's moving well, to? I'm, I'm not sure. And, you know, I'm going to find out, Val, because I was really getting this vibration for you all along here that you need to be there and be a part of this. This is really incredible. Um, I, can, I can see it in my mind as being the Mission Mountains, as I've told you before. That's where the, um, the Buddha gardens are, you know, the prayer gardens. And, and I'd like yes. to share and something. And uh, also um, that Buddha seeing this in his mind as thank the you. place. Thank you for saying that because it's interesting because when we were at the thank you dinner, um, she, someone had said while we were at the table that maybe um, we were supposed to build one there and then uh, somebody else said, no, maybe she's supposed to find one there. And that's why I wanted to ask you guys what you felt about that. So um, I think that's what she's supposed to do there. I have goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, I got to tell you, you know, Wendy and I talked about this before, and um, I was thinking of building one that was in the Mission Valley. Are you Valley. kidding? And um, hey, this is what I know I you have my eye on and, some property. <laughs> and there, there's a gentleman that attended the conference who he is with a, an organization that they build um, they build pyramids all over the world strictly for the uh, the idea of mass. Um, uh, meditations and they're open. They're free to the public, 24/7. Exactly. That was my plan. You free to the public. There. Yes, everything Link. is free. And he currently is in a. He is currently. Um, they, we, <laughs> are all currently in the next project. They're looking to do the Great Pyramid of America and have it completed by 2020. And the the intention is to house 100,000 people inside at one time for the purpose of meditation. Well, there is the property here. It is available. It is within cost reason. Um, I have been totally researching this whole idea because also the air is cleansed. 
yeah. for a hundred miles around these pyramids. So you I'm, know I'm, the wind blows. And I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited. Blows, the air cleanses. We can clean our air. I'm Again. so validated by this conversation because I thank you, Jim, because I just had this feeling that that's what she's there to find. And well, this doesn't this just include you and I. This includes. Oh no, no, no! This is everybody, and that's why I want to invite everybody to. You know, I. I, I can totally look, see us gathering and doing yes. Reiki inside the pyramid. And the the other message that I got that I told Marta, the creator of this, was that she, I was given the vision of not only the light that was shining from that particular area while this pyramid conference was happening, we were very protected there energetically mm -hmm. to make sure this was going to happen, um, but I, they, were, they gave me the vision of having this conference on the same weekend everywhere across the globe at the same time. Of course. We must raise our vibration, and the and sooner we go to this, the better that we are all going to be. Thousands of these pyramids being built all over the world. You guys, we can heal addiction. Yes. We, can we can heal the babies that are close to death. I mean, we, we can, can save their our, lives when they're on death's door with I mean, you, this water. You, you can build a little pyramid on your countertop and you can test it for yourself. Put an apple inside, an apple, a tomato inside, a tomato outside. See how long the tomato lasts underneath the pyramid. They, people have been proving it all. It's just... It's not in some people's best interest for, un for us to begin to understand we can heal ourselves. And it's time. Wow. That is, it is the truth. We can heal ourselves. It's part, of, mm -hmm. it's part of those things in the brain that have not been used. So. Well, I mean, and even the stones yeah. that are inside a pyramid, if they are removed and set around a garden, it will do nothing but like 10 times oh, the yes. amount of produce you oh, yeah. will get from that garden. And you, and you can actually put the water you inside the, under the pyramid and then feed the water to your garden. And it's just the, the, the results are just... In there. And yes, it's, it's like... And your seeds, yes. Yeah, se they say to soak your seeds in the, in the water underneath the pyramid. Um, wow. And it, it if you can make or it just a, storing a the seeds inside the pyramid as well. It doesn't matter what the what the pyramid is made of. You can make it out of a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Well, as long as it doesn't it's, have metal. It's the shape. No, you can make them out of copper. You can make them out of... They make copper pyramids to wear on your head. Well, yeah, I know. But for these healing like, purposes... But, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what what you're using them for, first off. Well, of course. And they so are for the healing mindful. purposes, they cannot contain metal. metal. Okay. That's why they were made from stone years ago. Is because for the healing purposes that they mm. were also used for, they could not contain any metal. Wow. So that's an important okay. factor. I wonder if it depends on the confirmation of that. Go to Michael Tellinger's. Oh um, yeah, I watched. Yeah, I've watched yeah, Michael Tellinger quite a bit. The one that um, is uh, <clears throat> right in yeah. the hold of all this too. And some people do say that for specific purposes they should not be made out of metal, but then for other purposes it really is irrelevant. It's the shape itself is how the energy is created. So it might, and perhaps, and, and again, this is all cause for all of us to research more, investigate more, practice more, play with it more. Tell everybody what your results are. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, and Val, yes. <laughs> about the, Jeremy has another question here quick and it's about the plane that disappeared that was supposed to be going to Egypt he's wondering if there's any feelings about that interesting I wasn't aware of that I wasn't it either what, just, what today. just today just uh, today could you uh, enlighten us about what the flame is about the the plane it was a flying oh a um, plane I thought yes. he said a flame it was close to Egypt when it disappeared off the radar. Interesting. No, I'm not aware of that. That's okay, good. well, it's very new, like I said, just happened today. So, or I'm sure last that night, I'm pretty sure. Question about that, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So another plane has disappeared. <laughs> there's, interesting. And, there, and there's definitely, as far as Egypt goes, there's a lot of Egyptian energy going, re-energizing going on right now. And even well, of the course, they just um, opened uh, one of the tombs that you know for, for visitation that had been closed for many many years. 
And, I see. Um, yeah. It's brilliant inside, absolutely brilliant. But they're trying to get, you know, the tourists to come there again because of the wars and things. People are shying away from going to that area. Yeah. But um, so they opened yes. up that. Well, and, the one and um, the gentleman that opened the new one in Bosnia was at the conference this weekend, and yes, it caused quite a stir actually, mm -hmm. um, all the way around the globe. Wow. And the galactic written languages are directly tied to the to these like hieroglyphs and these Egyptian. There's a lot of lot of information that came through this weekend that will be revealed. Is it on a YouTube or is it going to just be on a written form? Well, there's there will be CDs available to purchase of every speaker that took place. You can then they will be available individually. For very reasonable, they're like ten dollars or you know something, and then um, or you can buy the whole collection of all the speakers that attended the conference, and I think it's on like a couple CD set or something, you know, and then, and so it's all combined okay. into a. Where a can set, you buy but, um, that? I will definitely put that information out there. I've got the information. I'm, I will put the link in the comment box here um, when we're done. Very good. Thank you. And Thank Jim you. Barbara Joy had to say that uh, that that plane had had crashed um, in the oh, sea. Oh, it has. Yeah, I see. Sixty-five souls on board. So you know, may God bless oh, them and their family. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. So we'll send energy to those families. Yes. Thanks for letting us know, Val. Definitely, definitely. Is there any other questions or comments? Thank you, ladies, for yes. that discussion on pyramids. That was really good. Very, uh, very important as well. Mm -hmm. And Mark, um, I, I think he's going to ask a question for Jeremy here. Well, I'm, I'm trying to follow the chat history. It, it looks like Jeremy's been having a number of dreams where he sees himself turning white with, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Vitiligo, the, the uh, uh, condition that Michael Jackson had. Uh, and um, uh, I think he's wondering what the significance of that dream was for him. I think that um, most people see that white is a pure, pure color, uh, light is a pure color, so he's seeing himself as he's moving forward to becoming the light being that he wants to be and that's the changing of the color of the skin and um, it's just a wonderful symbol for him it, it will never happen in his lifetime probably but it's a symbol that he is going people will be able to tell because of the light coming out of him that he will be a light worker that he is a light worker that would be my thought process on that Jeremy writes in the chat, no, it was me in the future. Um, it was you in the future? Yes, he said he was 30. I'm assuming that was in his dream, and maybe, maybe that's just... Uh, well, maybe that's when um, people will, at that age is where they'll be able to see that he is actually a light being. All right. Um, I'm wondering, uh, I think we've covered all the questions that I remember seeing in the chat room. Uh, uh, I, I think Stan joined early and wanted some hybrid child information. Do we want to move on to that subject now? Sure. I'll bring, if you want hybrid child information, I can bring Sengi. Well, no, that was not uh, <laughs> the type of question I wanted to ask, but... Uh, yeah, okay. If, if you want to to go and channeling, that's uh, that's great. Um, oh, yeah. Well, before well, you go on, I, I wanted to say that I I listened to your interview with uh, Elena, I think, and it was great, you know, to see you um, take a step back and without channeling, just explain uh, what's uh, what's going on, and uh, that uh, that was great. So, thank yeah. you very much. Just, just like the discussion you. today, it's good also to have a uh, your point of view and not just uh, the the channeling piece. Uh, so that's, well, thank that's you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I thought that interview with 
Alina and um, Max and Susie went very nicely, and it was a a real a really beautiful uh, combination. They were beautiful people. I thought I really liked them. Okie dokie. What's next? Do you want me to bring Sangi or? Sure, you can bring Sangi, and I think that would be interesting, and I'm sure that there will be questions for her. Okay, very good. And, and she I does know talk about hybrid children. And, and hybridization and, yes. you know, all that, all the different subjects around that particular subject. Right. Is it true that she's taking to Kerr's place? Yes. Or his job? Or her job, I mean? Mm-hmm. Takur was overwhelmed because she works in many different fields there. She not only inputs all the information, but she does work as an assistant to um, Dees Do and to the doctor there, to Pat, and she's on the colonies and works there. So she has a lot of different hats that she wears, and she does speak to a lot of people in private sessions. So they took the responsibility of the hybrid children, hybridization, and all that away from her so that she could be freed up to do a little bit more with human colony. So um, she's very happy about that because it, uh, there is a lot to do with hybridization, and there's a lot of hybrid children now, and there's a lot of people asking to donate their DNA, and there's a lot of people asking how much of this and that they have in their systems, and they have, you know, just want to visit their children, and this is a lot to schedule and organize and to keep track of. So they handed it over to Sengi, who's a Fendorian, and she's been doing it now for, what, a couple or a few weeks? I'm not sure. She's still not completely... Uh, all caught up, but she will be very soon. Very soon. But she is uh, tightening up the program because she found that there were some places where it needed tightening. Uh, there were some hybrid children born within the last couple years that were not given permission for, and that was due to the gatherers giving false information. But because they just want the program to pro proliferate proliferate but uh, they were not given but they only want to do hybrid children with permission at this point so without permission they will not create a hybrid child because they're seeing that um, there are children being born and nobody's inquiring about them so that is an indicator that uh, they don't know that they're parents obviously. So that's not a good thing. So she is trying to, uh, they have actually stopped doing hybrid children for a very short period of time now until they can question all the, the, all the people that are doing the gathering and making sure that everybody is on the up and up and all the things that are being uh, reported to Sangi are the truth and they're going to have a little bit more to do than just report this, these, the gathering of this uh, DNA. They're going to have to say who gave the permission and what the, what the conditions were for that and different things. So she'll be able to get a hold of them if no one is getting a hold of her. So... I think this is a great step forward for the hybridization program. It's a new program for them. It's been around for a while, but it's the most successful program they've had. So a lot of other species would like to get in on helping Girk Fickner with their hybridization program. But once again, it's a lot of work, and so they're she's really undertaken quite a bit. And Takur is sort of relieved about this because it was taking a lot of her time and she was not able to keep everything that she was doing in, in full awareness. So she, she is very thankful to Sengi for accepting this position. 
So that's all I have to say about that. And I'll bring Sengi. If there's a, any other questions before I go, is uh, is Sengi also looking at what's going on in the in the colonies? Is she yes. tracking that? Okay. Yes, Sengi is uh, she is uh, aware of she is kept aware of what's going on in the colonies, but uh, she, her main job will be to listen for those that want hybridization. Uh, are looking to donate high uh, DNA for whatever for the science and health programs or those that are uh, just wanting to know what their hybridization percentages are and things of that nature and then she'll be keeping track of all the children as well so remember there's a lot of children at this point there's like almost 400 so that's a lot of children to keep track of so I'm not exactly sure how many children there are but I know it's up it's getting to be a large number any other questions well Jeremy was asking if uh, aliens are demons I'm not sure what the truth is behind the legends of demons, but maybe you have something to say on that. Demon, uh, aliens are not demons. The church teaches that aliens are demons because they don't know what they are. And when people don't know what something is, they put a label on it. And usually it's to stay away. If you don't know what it is, if, if there's poison in, under your cabinet, you, put, you keep it away from your children. If you don't know if it's poison or not, you still keep it away from your children because you don't know. That is the problem with uh, the co the cabal has taught humanity through movies and all kinds of negative uh, reinforcement, if you want to call it, that uh, aliens are evil and they are not. God created all beings. Now there are some that turn to darkness because they feel slighted by the light or something. But most species and most souls that are in the universe are not evil. They are made by God, just like we are. And if you are afraid of them, it's because you don't know who they are or what they can do. That's where the labels come from. So they are not evil. They are made by God, just like me and you. You have to get to know them before you can trust them, of course, just like anybody else in the world, just like anybody else in the universe. But you cannot just put a label evil on them because you don't know who they are or where they come from or whatever. Um, that is a very sad and easy thing to do. It's easy for you to just say, stay away from those kids, they're bad news. And you don't even know them, right? Have you, anybody been told that? Those people over there, no, you can't be part of them, they're bad. But you don't even know them. How are you going to know them? How are you going to know they're bad if you don't get to know them? That is the same way with aliens. It is that they are good people for the most part. And if you look at Tukur and others like Tukur, they're absolutely wonderful people. They have the biggest hearts in the world, and they are no not in the least bit evil or or negative. So, yes, not all aliens are demons. You, there are some out there, of course, that are not good, but most most of them are. I have to say, most of them are. Does anybody else want to shed some light on that? I would just like to add that I, I believe that there are good and bad in all beings. Um, of course. I, I like to see the good in people in the beginning and um, kind of let them go from there. And um, they right. usually show their true colors eventually. Um, and I course. try not to bury myself in the process of getting to know them. So that's kind Absolutely. of, I think There's that's a safe happen. way to be. And use your own discernment about what feels good to your heart. If it, if it doesn't feel good in your heart, then, you know, I wouldn't go there. Right. But just because you're taught 
that something's not good, resonate with that a little bit and say, is it because my mother said that they're not good that they're not good? Or is there proof that they're not good? You sort of have to find out for yourself. You're, you're, you're each individual. You each have your own responsibility for those people that you let into your life. And if you choose not to let them into your life, that's your choice. But don't let it be somebody else's choice that they are not, that you don't let them into your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, yes. That's not fair. Well, and I'd like to say, too, that I concur with that everything truly is made of love and light. Everything was created from the one love. And we all almost have to thank, well, not almost, we have to be grateful to all beings for their contribution because even if it's something that we perceive as negative, the purpose of that, we have to thank them for, be, for being the person who came to this planet to show that to us to show us the things that we do and do not want to be. We have to be grateful for their being a, allowing us to become aware of that. So I actually look at them as pure blessings, not as evil, because I have to thank them for wanting to come here. Somebody has a dirt, everybody, some people have a dirty job to do. <laughs> and maybe that's theirs, is to show us our own inner light strictly by showing us what we don't want to be. You know, Wendy, I can totally agree with that. I mean, everybody here probably knows yep. my history by now. I don't need to reiterate that. So what I'm going to say is that there has been some people in my life that have been, you know, what you would call horrific. But the lesson that they have taught me is that I am strong enough to make it through anything. There is really nothing that can bring me down. My light is that strong. And I hold on to that. And um, that's just who I am on the inside now. And because of those people, because of the exactly. things that happened, I know that, that I can get through anything. It, even and if, if we, the power was shut off tomorrow and uh, all that kind <laughs> yes. of stuff that people are so afraid of, I know I would be okay. And the higher, I can get through it. The higher level of that thinking, too, is, is that if we truly have come to understand that we create our own reality, that we are completely responsible for that creation, that we have to also thank ourselves for creating that reality for ourselves for the idea of expansion. We are not victims. We create this for ourselves simply for experience. Thank you, Wendy. I mean, I was just on the phone this morning with my cousin who is really ill and has already had cancer one time and had surgery and fearing that she has it again and like I told her it is there if you wish it to be there if you think it to be there but please don't think that way please tell your body that you're healthy please try to battle this from the inside out as well I'm not telling her not to go to doctors or anything like that for their medical advice what I'm telling her is to support it with her own thoughts from the inside out, right? I mean, that is what we concentrate on. What we think is what we are. So look in the mirror in the morning. Tell herself she loves herself. Tell herself she's healthy. Tell herself she's going to have a blessed day. And try to move forward into that from that point. And I think that's all each of us can do when we're down and we don't feel well is to just try to take on each day one moment at a time with the best most positive thoughts in mind and I know Jim just went through a, a really bad sickness and I'm sure he can speak that he was doing the same thing trying to fight it from the inside out as well and yes and um, the thing is about that spirit had a reason for it you know and I was happy to learn the different lessons that were needed to be learned from it. So it was all very positive after it's all over. It it seemed it might have seemed to other people, oh, sick, negative, blah blah blah. But not all not no, not really. It was there were times where I felt really bad, of course, but I give thanks to God that he helped me through it and he helped me learn some lessons about it as well. 
And isn't that really what we're all here to do is to really show each other the light within themselves and to show each other that you have the power within you to heal, to have every joy, every abundance. And I mean, that's really what it's about. It's not about competing. It's about showing each other you are the light. You are powerful. You can do this for yourself. We're, I'm just here to help you believe you can. Yeah. I mean, that's all of us. You know, we're all doing that with each other. I can compl completely agree with that, Wendy. I have been I mean, there, and if there's nothing that I didn't get when I was sick was that, was that people didn't really get that what I needed was positive brought into my life, not that I am sorry, not the pity, mm -hmm. not any of that, but more the you can do this. Um, you're well, think well. Um, you look great instead of saying, oh, you look exactly. so tired, it's you look about ill. empowering you each know. other, not disempowering each other. Right. <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Very cool. Chris, can you speak? I've seen she was trying to. Um, I just don't know what the hangout is on. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we're just kind of hanging out, but right now we were speaking with Asengi on hybrid children. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions. Uh, well, I haven't brought her yet, but we we're going to. Oh well, we were going in. to put it that way. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we were just kind of hanging out at the right. moment <laughs> and having different conversations, but uh, yes. we can bring her in now if anybody is ready. Well, everybody. I I have a question. Um, when I'm muted, um, how do I um, how do I chat? Because I don't have a side box. I don't have a box over on the other side. Do you have the, a gear at the top on the right side? Uh, mine's right in the middle. Okay. Um, if you mouse to the left side of the screen, the chat should appear, unless you're in the new Hangouts, mm -hmm. in which case you have to go to the upper right. There's three dots that you can click and select go to the old hangouts and then you can get the side chat. But the, unless the, you're on unless you're on a device that does it, like I'm on my tablet and it's there is no side chat because there's not enough room. Same thing if you're on a mo mobile device. All right, I don't, I don't have it. So that that's all right. I'll just if I have anything I'll just wave or something. We can speak just, to you about it later if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, just right, unmute and and chime in when nobody else is speaking. You know, there, every now and then we stop and ask, are there any other questions? And that's a good time to pop in voice-wise. Okay, sounds good. All right, excellent. I'm going to do a short meditation unless somebody else has any more questions. I think we're good, Jim. Okay, okay I'm going to bring Sangi, uh, the Fendorian that is taking over the Hybrid Children program, to come talk to you. Uh, if you have questions for her, please be specific because she's still new at this. So if you know the name of your children, you know all the information, uh, and you have a specific question about them, just be specific so she doesn't have to search all over the place. Um, all right, very good. And know that I'm making a list, so if anybody has questions, please let me know. Very good. And I have a question, um, so I don't know where the list is. I'll be making it in the chat, sweetheart. Oh, thanks. Okay. Okay, very good. All righty, I'll be back in a minute. I have to do a small meditation, as you know. So... I am Sangi. Welcome, Sangi. Thank you very much. 
I am prepared to answer questions. I knew that this was coming. Chris, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I am ready. Um, hi, Singy. Hello. Hi. Um, have you visited me in the dream state ever? What is your name? Uh, Chris. And what is your last name? I have 37 Chrises. Okay. Um, can I do a first name? A yes. Sweet first name? Uh, Chris. Where at in the country are you? That will help. Oh, okay. Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. The Chris in Massachusetts. Yeah. There's only two there. Which city are you in? Oh, um, Springfield? Yes, I know where that is. Yes. What is your question? Okay, um, well, I was wondering if I've been visited by you in the dream state. Not in the dream state. I have not visited anyone. I've been too busy here. But there have been those that have been visiting people. Did it look like a female? Yeah, it was a female and she wore like kind of um like white um laceyish robe. It had like it was like almost embroidered or something. Ah, that was Sentia. I believe that was Sentia. Was she seeming very high dimensional? Well yeah, she was definitely very high dimensional. She was very yeah. floaty and she was very just like neutral and loving. Um and she was she's trying to tell me or impart some wisdom and I don't she was just really com comforting, I guess is the word. Santia from the Sirius system. Uh, she has been an ambassador to Earth now for several years. She is visiting people that need comforted and in some information that may not be readily available. So, yes, if she has visited you, that is a beautiful thing and probably has left some information in your subconscious that is helping you to remain calm or happy. Mm -hmm. Or have you been changed since her appearance? Yeah, there was definitely a transition going on when she came. Oh, yes, Absolutely. they're downloading. They're letting me know right now what it was. So... Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you for... Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know who it was. Um, yes. Her name is Sentia. Sentia. Awesome. Yes. I'm, I'll, 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 thank you. I'll remember that. Um, I have another Excellent. question. Um, yes. Well, I had a bedside visitation. Um, I was just kind of taking a nap. I purposely left my blinds open, so... Whoever was out there could kind of watch me, and I invoked, like, just asked if anyone wants to come visit me to have contact. Um, so some being did come to my bed. There was communication while I was in, like, some sort of trance state, um, and it was a lot of communication. It was a, quite a long communication that we had. I was wondering what this being was up not up to, but it was fine. It was a neutral interaction. Yes. One moment. I do not know who that was, but I can check for you. One moment, please. Thank you. Ah. They are checking into that. Is there another question? Will I get that answer? Uh, yeah, just for, like, myself and others, um, I got a little information regarding, like, how there's, there's different hybridization programs, and for those who, like, for me, like, I was, like, uh, told I have hybrid kids I don't know about, or, or that I do know about now, um, and I'm sure there's a few, there's many more, but it's just that, like, there's other hybridization programs, and, like, yes. they don't all cross over is what they let me know, and that's all. That is true. This is what is happening, though. We are trying to make the hybridization programs that are here in your space, your solar system, combined into at least some kind of understanding so that we can keep track of these children and answer questions as they are asked. You do have hybrid children from Grukvik near, but mm -hmm. they are not recent. 
your children are two, and they are both girls, and they are from about three years ago before the hybridization program was personalized. Therefore, these girls named, you can name them if you want, their, their names from their parents are Korasa. Korasa is the name of the Yuyil girl. Okay. A and Nga. Nga, I guess, would be the closest. Ingya. Ingya. Would be okay. the name of uh, the Pleiadian girl. Yael Pleiadian. Okay, so yeah. Are, and so there are different programs of each other as well. They may not even know each other. Or they do know each other, but they're just separate. I get well, it. Well, those two are from the Gruk Frickneer program. Oh. So they do know each other, and they're both on ERA. But um, there, are, there might be others that have uh, hybridization programs with you that we are not aware of. Yeah, that's fine. I'm very connected to Planet ERA. Thank you for letting me know where they are. Um, yes, we knew that you were connected to ERA, so we did put them there for mm. easy visitation. Sweet. I'll connect with them. I love ERA. Um, yes, did they that... are oh. now... One is 3.2 years old and one is 3.7 years old. So therefore, they are, they are actually talking and walking and things of this nature and getting along. They are both very lovely children. One has dark hair uh -huh. and one has a sort of a, a blue. The uh, Yuhil has a silver blue hair, but mm -hmm. usually Yuhil do not have hair at all. So <laughs> to have hair at all is a blessing for a Yuhil. <laughs> so yes, the Yuhil has silvery blue, very light colored hair, but not a whole lot of it, but she is the envy of the kindergarten there. Well, not the kindergarten, the school there. That's funny. Um, it did, now, you told me their ages, but is that the same age as how long? Like how many? No, not really. They're actually more advanced there than they would seem to be on Earth. Right. They would be acting like five and six years old or even higher. I do not have an exact correlation yet. That's something that I will learn later after I get a handle on all the other things I need to know. Yeah, I was just wondering if their ages correlated with when they were actually made. No, not exactly. They will seem more advanced to Earthlings than the 3.2 and 3.7. Right. Okay. So it was a, a few years ago that they were made that they were created. However, there yeah, were so I'm being told that there will seem like nine and ten year olds yeah that makes sense okay oh yeah yeah okay I get it I get it they've told me time well. I've gotten timelines um did you ever find out who that visitor was ah uh, let me find out yes one moment they do they they're acknowledging that they did find out one moment <laughs> okay <laughs> His name is Konkushin Skaribanza. <laughs> don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> I will not. I don't know if I even pronounced it the right the first time. Konkushinita. <laughs> yeah. It'll be on the recording if you want to hear it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is a male, and he is from um, Alpha Centauri, ah. a planet called Quichin. Oh, neato. Okay. So that is who it was, but we do not know what message he shared with you. It was He actually wanted a lot of information from me. <laughs> I was like, good thing. There like, is a lot of new species coming around the planet, and they will want information of those people that they find to be innocents uh -huh. and those that they want to get information from from very innocent uh, beginnings because uh, innocence is very powerful. Do you understand that? Uh, and so yeah. therefore, if they feel that you are a powerful individual, they might want to use you as an ambassador or something of that nature. So keep in mind that 
uh, do not be wary of them necessary, but yeah. necessarily. But if they come back and want you to do things for them, please be wary and uh, resonate with that completely before you do. Yeah, I was fine. I mean, cause like I was in a trance and uh, like there is a lot of eliciting of questioning telepathically from the being and yes. I was just streaming it astrally, energetically to the being. I yes. um, So it didn't take energy from me. It just, <laughs> and I did welcome. It was a neutral. It was fine. That's fine. I know they needed to learn stuff. That's fine. I have not heard that anyone from this particular planet coming to Earth in any form. So this is the first that we've heard of this one. Okay, well, what other... There are ships around in the solar system that do belong to them. Yeah, there's a lot of ships uh, for me. <laughs> I always have ships around. That's why I let them uh, just enter my uh, actual real space instead of just from ship because I'm always being telepathic. So, exactly. Yeah, okay, I'll let other people go. That's great. Very thank well. I you. do I do have limited time, so please be aware. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, hello? Hello, who am I speaking to? Bianca, nice to meet you. Bianca, very well. Yeah, thank uh, you. Nice to speak to you as well. Thank you. I wanted to uh, ask about the kids that aren't being asked about. Um, we were speaking about the hybrid children that didn't have anybody inquiring about them. I wonder if other parents that have hybrid children can foster them if it's needed? Like my Of course. Do not worry. Their parents, their natural parents outside of your world will definitely take care of them very well. There oh. is no, no problem with that. They love their children. They yeah. just do not have an attachment yet to the earth, and there is hybridization from humans in these particular hybrid children. And so to find their actual parents, yes, there was. it should have been kept track of from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. However, there are some of them that there is no information where the DNA came from. Now, if we match up the DNA with the inquiring person, it can be it can be understood that that is their child. Oh, okay. And um, is there anything you could tell me about my hybrid children? I heard I have seventeen there, but I'm not quite sure. Oh my! You have many. Oh, okay. I could just leave it. Um, at that. How many? Seventeen? Yeah. There are very few that have that many. Oh. Bianca, where are you from? Uh, Just to let you be, I have seven, seven Biancas. Uh, California? California. What portion of California? Central California. Um, Central sorry. California. Very well. Yes, some of those are Grookfic near hybrid children, but not 17. Oh, okay. Some uh, of them are from other species programs. You have about five that oh. are from Grookfic near. Awesome. All right. And they are of five different species. That is interesting that you would do that. <laughs> Was that your request or did you not request it? Oh, um, I'm okay with it, yeah. <laughs> did you not request it, though? Uh, well, not, not, not that I know Some of. Some of them are rather new. Some of them are within the year. There oh, are two of them within the last year. Those would be the ones I'd be concerned with. That the, if there was permission given. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, but um. Because okay. that one of them is Fendorian. Uh, the latest one is Fendorian, which is my species, mm -hmm. and uh, the parents are. She's a lovely child. Uh, she does have. It it appears that when doing hybridization with any species, the human face seems to be a predominant or prominent thing that most of them have. They seem to have more human features on their face and then more um, other features in the rest of the body. Now, th there are some that are very, very human and you probably couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Like the you yield children and some of the Pleiadian children are very human looking. But your Fendorian child 
looks Fendorian except for on the face. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, it is a female. And then the, the other child was a um, the alien. Mm -hmm. And it is a he. And he looks fairly human. There are some features that are not human. But he is, the last two within this year are the Pleiadian who is now seven of your months old and the female is only about five of your months old. Oh, that's wonderful. So the other ones are older, over a year. A yes. year and six months, a year and nine months, and two years and four months. Wow, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Much love. Much love to you. And visit your children often, if you can. Yes. They, yes. We will put your children, you see, if we know that there is one mother, we put all those children and families in one area. That happens to be on, on one of the ships that is going around Australia. So all your children in are going around a ship in Australia. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Hi, Sengi. <clears throat> this is Valerie, and I'm asking a question for Jeremy Angelus. And he yeah. would like to know if he is a hybrid child. If he is a hybrid child or has a hybrid child? If he is one. One moment. That's what I thought you said. One moment, please. We can check his DNA from a distance. There is usually hybridization in most human beings, but to be an actual hybrid child will bring out a great deal of one particular hybridization. One moment, please, while we do the scan. Hmm. It will take only one moment. It would appear he's not a full-bred hybrid child, but there was hybridization added to him at about one month at, after birth, which was about 10% of you yield. But there are also Pleiadian, and he had 1% of you yell in him to be, as he was being born, no, 2%. So now he's up to 12%, you see, you yell completely. And he has about 4% Pleiadian, 4% Syrian, 2% Octorian. Very well. He was wanting to know if there was any gray. One moment, please. There is some gray, but it is not a huge amount. It's 1.5%. Okay. But usually when gray is found in the system, it is usually in small quantities. Otherwise, it does affect the action of the human quite extensively. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes, 1.5%. Actually, 1.67%, but we go to the closest 1.5%. He says, thank you, and love and light. Love and light. And I do like it that you have a lot of you yield in you. For you, you look actually, I can see you from here, you actually have some you yield features. Continue. Hello, Sandy. This is Sabrina. Sabrina, how are you? I'm pretty good. Did you want to know uh, about your children? Um, well, I think there is another one. A third? Yes. And Not I think from Rock Creek Near. We only have two of yours. 
there it, he he seems to have been recently born do you know where I don't know where but I just I was just told this week um so I I held him he was a baby baby and it's a male like just it's a male. I think it's Lyra. Can I check something, please? Because I do not see anything for a third child on the Grookfick near records. Okay. Do you know what species this child is? I think it's Lyran. Did you ask for this child? No. One moment, please. It is not from the Grookfick near Lirens. Okay. But someone that knows that you love the Liren children. One moment, obviously. One moment, please. We will have to get back to you on that because we cannot get a hold of the Lyrans that are closest in space that are not from the Alliance. But if it's a Lyran child, it would probably be from there, them. We are oh, trying okay. to get all the species together so that we can keep track of all the children that are being born, whether they are permitted or not. Okay. Um, the uh, my other question was uh, for uh, Leonardo. Yes. Is is he um, just human and Lyran? Yes. Okay. And and what about Maya? Maya. Is she? Is she just? Um, you yell and human, but does she have other? One moment, please. I'm looking up that records. Maya is yes. You yell in human. Okay. Predominantly, yes. Of course, there's always small amounts of other things in there. However, that is what she is predominant is human and you yell. Okay. Um. She so, is so cute. So is there, because actually, is there a way where all of this can be united? Because people are having all these children that they don't know about from... This is what I we're guess. trying to do, dear, is that we're, we're trying to unite all the different programs, at least so that I can have a database to find out where the other ones are from. Okay. Um, this way I will be able to give you information, maybe not a lot, but some information on these children that were not born from the Grookfrick Near program. Now, eventually, we would like to combine this program so that maybe more than one of us will be in control and be able to run it by a group a group of people running it because it looks like it's going to be extensive. There are Syrians, there are reptilians having children. Uh, we do not really, we do, uh, are not really looking to tell people to have reptilian children. It's a very difficult uh, life at the beginning. But there are so many other species that are having programs, but they are not letting anyone know, and we find that this needs to be changed. Grookfrick Near is becoming very much in line with a program that needs to have permission and needs to have uh, the documentation of all the visitations and things of this nature, and so many things that need to be organized. We would like to put 
organization on all these other programs and bring them at least into one database so that we can all share information. Yeah, at least I, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do agree. Like, like a central database of the information so anyone can access it should they need to find out. Yes, this is what we're looking for. Um, yeah, I think that would be definitely very helpful because, yeah, there are many people that have a lot of children. Um, there was uh, one person that asked me to ask you, um, his name is Hayan. Yes, I know Hayan. We only have one. He is from Sweden. Yes. Yes. What is the question? He wanted to know if he had any that he knows of, he doesn't. He has never requested any. No. However, he does have one that is 3.7 years old. No, 3.9 years old. It is a male what? urine. Male urine, okay. And the name that the parents have given it is Shanshua. Shanshua. Okay. And if he would like to name it, he is very welcome. And if he would like to visit, that would be wonderful. Okay. All right. I, I will let him know. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Is there any others? Barbara? Barbara, is your mic working? I have nine Barbaras. Which one is she? Barbara Joy? Barbara Joy. Barbara Joy. What is the question? I believe Barbara may be having technical difficulties. Can we skip to uh, Rowie and come back to Barbara? Rowie. There is only one Rowie, so I know that who that is. Rowie, speak to me. Rowie, are you Mike? Rowie was unable to speak. Speak, but his question was about the second son. And do you have any information about that? Does he know which? One moment, please. What species is the second son? Was it a Grukvik near child? I'm trying to find his file. It does not seem to be here. One moment. Oh, excuse me. He meant literally a second son, like S U N. S U N? Yeah, not really a hybrid topic. Oh, so it isn't about any hybrid children. That is why I cannot find it. Okay, we'll skip that question then. Very well. Barbara, are you uh, able to speak now? There's so much in the side chat, I've lost the list. Uh, Chris, are you next? Oh, hi, um, I'm not next. Roy's next. And then me. Rowie's um, question was not about children. So we're passing Rowie for now. You're next. Okay. Um, I was wondering if I was a full hybrid, like complete full hybrid, not just like a hybrid human. Um, I, I can check that for you. What is, your name is Chris and you're from Massachusetts. Right. Yeah. One moment, please. I still have that file available. Great. One moment. 
Thanks. I'm training some volunteers to help me with some of these tasks. Great. You are a 30% hybrid, which is not full hybrid, but is very high. Interesting. Yes. You have 30% hybridization, which is rather high. Do you feel disconnected from the third dimension often? Yeah, I had to learn how to be human. That is what I thought. You are Pleiadian mostly. I mean 30%. Yeah, I like my scan because I, I get that I'm Pleiadian, Arcturian, Arcturian Zeta, Reptilian, Andromedian. Andromeda. Well, the highest percentage is Pleiadian at 30%. You do have uh, those other things in you, but they're not nearly as high as percentages. Do you have the, the next highest is 9%, which is uh, Yu Yu. Oh, okay. But there is some Zeta, mm -hmm. and there is some, you said Octorian, yes, there's some Octorian. Mm -hmm. But yes, mostly just it's 30% Pleiadian, which is very high. Reptilian Androm Andromedan? Andromedan is not that high, about 5%. So that's sort of an average number. Reptilian, you're only at about 4%, which is still very high because did you have a rough adolescence? A rough entire life. Well, adolescence, the yeah. adolescence of a reptilian, and 4% is rather high, but I think it would be overshadowed by the Pleiadian and Yu Yil. But if you entered a period of your adolescence where you were feeling very fuzzy and blank oh, and angry. What age is adolescence? It depends, um, it depends on you, how you develop the reptilian adolescence, it can be anywhere from 10 years old to 20 years old. Oh, the teenage years. Yeah, yeah. those ones were horrid. My mom tried to give me a foster care. Ah, not good. Yeah, anyway, personal stuff. Yep. Not, well, we will not discuss that at this time. <laughs> okay. But I will uh, tell you that, yes, mostly Pleiadian. But there is that 4% reptilian is rather high and does cause some problems. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, this is Yinji. Yes. How are you today? Greetings. I am well. Uh, my question is... Um, I know I already have one hybrid son, and um, I'm wondering if I um, am going to have any more children. Not unless you request it. Right now, there is no request in for a second child that I have. So if I wanted to request it, I would just ask you? Yes, I would have to put it in the records. They would have to either collect another specimen or use the DNA that is on hand. Okay. That would be up to you as well. Yes. All right. And then um, my son, Micah, on ERA. Yes. Uh, how old is he now? Oh, let me check. What was the last time you checked? He's like five. He's like five. Yes. Okay. All right. That was all I had. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. My time is growing very short. Okay. Can we fit one more question in from yes. Kim? From Kim, please. Kim. Hello, my friends. 
It's How so are you? nice of you to be here. Thank you so much. I spoke to, to her about finding someone just like you to help her out, and I'm so excited that you have stepped up to help us all. That's oh, awesome. Uh, I just would like to send a message um, to Val Valina and Zoom. They're the parents of my uh, Yale hybrid child named Mika. Um, I do send them love all the time. I just like yeah. an affirmation that they do hear from me. Um, yes. oh, that's my first question. I have a very second, a very fast, quick question. This second yes. question as well, if that's all right. Continue. Very good. Okay. Uh, the other two. I have two other children, uh, Soul Radiant and Ultraviolet. Yes. I don't have the parents' names. So I was just wondering if you'd tell me a little bit more about them. Their ultraviolet is just amazing, really. She's taken off. Actually, in her records, it says that she is brilliant and that she <laughs> has um, very creative aspects to her. And with her name being ultraviolet, she has taken to learning the color palette and using it in some of her artwork. Oh, lovely. So, and also, she is very interested in science and music. Ah, yes, that doesn't surprise me. Yes. And, and Sol, he's the son. He is... Both at the same time. He's high on mathematics. And <laughs> engineering. And um, actually, um, he's a very much of an inventor at this point. Wow, that's amazing. So that's and the, their ages, roughly, do you have a moment to tell me that, please? Um, a moment to tell you what? Their ages. One moment. Mm -hmm. Do you want their earth ages or their... No, you want their other... Okay. Yes, please. Right now, they're equivalent to... I'm trying to figure that out. Well, <laughs> it's not easy. I don't. 13, know. <laughs> I think the one uh, ultraviolet is the younger, I believe. Yeah. She is equivalent to 14 years of age uh, in her thought process, mm -hmm. and Saul is equivalent to 17. Ah, nice. Okay, yep. Thank you so much for you are very welcome with their lovely children. Thank you very much. Thank but now you. I must go. I'm sorry, that is all the time I have. There is so much work to be done here. Thank it you is for okay, your time. And we just want to, yes, thank you for your time, Sengi. And we want to tell you what a pleasure it was to have you come and speak with us today. Yes, I will do it again sometime. And I just hope that this is helpful. Very helpful. Thank you again. Namaste. Namaste. Very well, then. All right. Hello? Welcome back, Jim. Hey. She said at the very end there that she had set aside a longer block of time for you. However, something came up and she was called away. Oh, it was fine. She did a wonderful job, Jim. You better get a drink, yes. <laughs> that was long for you. <laughs> it was? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Of course. It was wonderful. <laughs> And I have to go soon, too, because I have another session coming up. So, but, well, Thank um, you so much, Jim. Uh, we did end up having quite a few people join. We made it over 10. Everything went smooth. So oh, wonderful like session, everyone. Go on there, yeah. We were over 16 at one We hit 16, I believe, at one point. Oh, yeah, very I good. Think I, I think I might have even counted 17, so test uh, mission accomplished. Yeah, so we you hit can do. 19, guys. 19, yay. 19? Wow. 19. 
Yeah. Good job, Yay. everyone. And some Yay. really great questions, too. And um, just uh, there was another question I think you can just answer on the side here if you would like to, uh, Jim. But uh, Carolina yeah. would like to know what species is Sengi? Is, is Seng She's Fendorian. Yes, Fendorian. She's Wonderful. Fendorian. She's a um, uh, she took over. Uh, they the, when the Fendorians became part of Gurkfignir, they immediately started training him for all different kinds of things on the ships, so that some people could take uh, vacations and get off the ships because they were there for long periods of time. And so now there's many many Fendorians on the ships around the Earth and uh, taking over really nice positions because they're very smart and learn very quickly. So it's very cool. So I love it. And so did Tukur. Tukur was very happy to give up some of that responsibility. She just had too much. So. Yay, go Tukur. <laughs> yes. So, Jim, did you want to stay for blessings or sign off and get um, ready for the No, I can stay for a couple more minutes. Go okay. ahead. I'd like somebody else to do the blessings for closing. That would be nice. Um, can I do a blessing? It's the first time I do it. Yes, please. please Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to do it this time, so one second. Excellent. Very good. Just going to set the intention. Very good. <laughs> Although your actions may be erratic, you are full of grace and light and love. We look upon you and see that you are moving forward and are so happy that you are becoming slowly part of the galaxy, slowly becoming part of our neighborhood. We love you and we support you as you have been supportive to us as well. Thank you. And be well. Any other blessings today? We have Sabrina with us, Wendy. I have one. Very good. Um, all right. Anachi, Anaha, Anachi, Anaha, Anachi, Aha, Anachi, Anaha. Anachi abaka chika mani ka kapa. Anachi abaka chika pati kana kana pa. Ah, anakata chika na. Anachata chika na na ka kapa chacha. It is about the love that we share with one another. It is about the love that we give off and share with the universe. It is about the love that is the light that is within your eyes and shows to others when you just look at them. It is about the love that is being brought forth day to day and the light that is shown from the skies that is feeding the energy of love in your life. Let us be all a part of connection and rebounding and making things happen that are supposed to happen in this next age. It is about the love of ourselves and of others. Anyone else? 
I will do. I can do uh, one in English. I'll go one. I'll go one after you, Sabrina. <laughs> okay. Was it Wendy okay. first or Sabrina? No, no, no. Go ahead, Sabrina. Um. So this is something I wrote yesterday, so I already know. Um, in enjoying the Creator and its expansion, I feel the nothingness of my body. I feel the joy in the vibration of myself as I give myself to the universe, as I give myself to all there is. I have become boundless in the light. For God dwells within me, and life lives within me. That's it. Beautiful. Within us all. Thank you, Sabrina. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Do you want to go, Wendy, or you want me? Go ahead, hon. Okay. She liokotunwa iya kahiya sani ya kieli otokunwa ti. Tinagi sheli o kotogua. Inigia sheli o kotua. Nikigi o kokoa tatagalin. Iko kokoaki. Isheli o koko. Inigiaka. Iko kua. Isheli o kokoa. Niaka sheli o kononua. My heart goes out in the spirit of joy and wonder. We are all sharing together and growing in the light. It is a beautiful day and age for your people, and we are supporting you with all of our love and all of our energy. Continue to move, and we will continue to get closer. Namaste. Thank you, Brian. Niala sani atunua shiakala tole amala sola. Kunua kashaya la hiana kwa kaliata ruko shabliana. O hala siana ki. Shora shia hala siana kauko apali asane to ruko. O polianta kahi. Shotilianta kaya washi pukurahi. Luma hila siata ki. O la haniana walasu. Ha yisha. Lianda kalandro bala hawaii wananina. A la si. I wahashaya atu liamala palia to the Krapaliana Hiwa or Ashi Timala Sanaki Aluatu Ahaniana Alua Iku Nitu Ashaya Ish Nana Hatu Kaliasa Mahala Namaste. Did you have the interpretation for that? I think they gave it to you. Um Yes, but yes, I'd like to hear yours as well, if you have one. Oh, actually, they didn't give me one. Okay. To say they gave it to you. <clears throat> it, it was about all of us embracing our hybrid children, sending them our love and our light, speaking to the parents, showing them the care and love that we have for our earthly children, and sending these images and visions to their hearts, showing them how we hold them and caress them and keep them dear to us. Visit them often. Please, they ask that you speak to them frequently. Honor your hearts and know that if you are asking the question, if you are a parent, that you indeed are. They feel your love, they feel your excitement, they hear your music, they hear your songs. Speak to them in light languages, speak to them in your own language, speak to them telepathically. For it is in this heart space that they can find you and you find them. Excellent. Well, I must go, and that was beautiful. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you all. Thank you, Jim. This was wonderful. I had a really wonderful time, and I think that it was a very worthwhile get-together. I think we connected hearts in a couple of places, and many, many places, actually. And that's what it's all about. So, 
Much love to you, and I will see you all soon. There will be a webinar this Saturday, so I think it'll be here. Well, thank you so much for this unexpected pleasure, Jim. It yeah, really oh, has been great. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. We love you. Yeah. Bye, love Jim. You too. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Love you, Jim. Bye, Jim. Love you, Jim. Love you, Jim. Thank you. Love you too. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Well done, Mark. Congratulations. Thanks, Mark. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Well, Excellent thank you job. Helping me get my feet wet. I believe Guru Dan will be back in the host seat on Saturday for the next webinar. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, filling in for him so that he can take a break now and then. And Valerie, thank you so much for all of your support in queuing questions and uh, and uh, asking questions. My pleasure, Mark. Um, we do need to friend each other on Skype, though, <laughs> just so that we can get our stuff together behind the scenes, as everyone knows. So, um, yeah, I think we did very well for our first time and for not being able to talk to one another. Uh, we thank, thank everyone you. for your patience, understanding, and for coming in to join us and test this out. Yeah. It seems to be and, a yeah, there great more success. Than 10 that got online, so it's working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jim. Excellent. Have a great day. I'm going to have on. to pop out. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. I'm going to take the broadcast offline. Thank everybody yes. for coming, and uh, we'll see many of you again on Saturday. Okay. Namaste Thanks, Mark. to all, and thank you to all. Okay. Goodbye.